This is game number two of the WFTDA East Region Playoffs. The Sugar Bush Showdown from Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. As Bam told us, Reverend Al, we've got Boston coming in at a seven seed and D.C. coming in at the 10. What do you see in this bout? Well, this is the first time these teams have ever played each other. They have never once. And it's, it's kind of surprising that they're so close to each other in the Eastern region. They've never played, not in regional tournament, not in WFTDA sanctioned bouts. So this is the first time. The only team that they played against one another is Cincinnati, both winning those games, but Boston doing a, handled, a, a much handily better job against D.C. And we are off right now with our first jam of the night. Little pain out there. No, Got Boston's it. still in their warm-ups, I believe, Al. They had us a little confused little, with their uh, pennies. <laughs> little throw-off start uh, A little bit of red <laughs> and yellow action on the track for Boston, getting in their last-minute warm-ups. We do want to tell you that if you have any questions or anything you want to mention to us, please talk to us at uh, on Twitter at Talk2WFTDA. Once again, both of these teams have only played one mutual uh, opponent where they both won, and that was against Cincinnati. Boston beating Cincinnati back on uh, August 11th by a score of 237 to 111. The D.C. All-Stars also playing Cincinnati back on May 19th. Much closer game, 162 to 132. We and all know that the tri triangulation game is a dangerous one to play, though, because sometimes it just depends on who was skating that day. There are a number of factors that can enter into, you know, one team doing better against another team or the same team. But uh, that is something to consider. Now, I did talk to the bench coaches for D.C. before the game. Misjudgment and sticks and stones. They said they are coming in all in from the start. That's their only chance in this tournament, Al. What do you think about Boston? Boston definitely, I, I talked to their coach before the game, and he said the most difficult thing is they don't know anything about D.C. They don't know what they're about to walk in to and what kind of game they're going to have to play. Now, what D.C. All-Stars have been together for quite a long time now. They've been one of those teams that has slowly climbed to the ranks. Boston is on a rebuilding year. They've lost a lot of major players, but when you can lose that many major players and come back and still be ranked at a high enough ranking at the end of the season, when you can come in and play at this level, that says something about the program that they're playing against. And now we are getting ready to go. You can see on the jam line, Ginger Kid, one of those new players for Boston, Rev. An amazing player, Ginger Kid, has been so far this year. Really been the fallback person for Boston. And we are just about ready to go. I do want to say one shout out before we get going. One thing we do know about Boston is that one of their jammers, Lil Payne, is also known to her students at Lilla G. Fedrick Pilot Middle School as Miss Lider. <laughs> and so we want to say hello to all of Miss Lider's students at the Lilla G. Frederick Pilot Middle School in Dorchester, Massachusetts, as we are getting ready to go. There's the first whistle, Reverend now. Jersey Jill versus Ginger Kid as the game begins. Ginger Kid able to break right through. She is now your lead jammer. And DC Jammer still caught up in the back. Nice work by Dixie Kicks, but uh, eventually she's going to be sprung. Meanwhile, Ginger Kid calling it off. Breaks through four up in the air, quickly calls the jam off, four and out. Textbook roller derby right there. Ginger Kid, the uh, prototype of that. And there's Little Payne right there. Say hello to your classmates at Pilot Middle School, Lilla G. Frederick. That is Miss Leiter on the jam line for the Boston Massacre. How many, how, many, how many kids get to say my teacher plays roller derby? This is a great world. My teacher was a nun, so I don't think she played any sports as hard and impactive as the roller derby. Lenore Gore jamming for DC. And Lil Payne gets through. She didn't get through cleanly, though, Rev. Minor track cut. 
This is the lead jammer call. Lenoa Gore gets through, gets lead jammer call, wisely calls the jam off. Smart play. DC knows they've got to stay with Boston throughout this game. They can't be playing fast and loose. They've got to play, like you said, meat and potatoes roller derby. Exactly. Both these teams are going to take a little while to fill each other out. I think we're going to see some really low scoring first few jams. Uh, I believe that uh, the last time Boston saw DC play was last year against Providence down in Providence. A lot of the Boston players were down there for that bout. DC, all the same players I remember though. That's a cohesive unit. Maya Mangleyu and Marion Barracuda, the Jammers. Marion Barracuda wearing the red for DC. Maya Mangleyu up towards the top of the pack. Coming into turn number three, she's lead. Great job right there on behalf of uh, Artemis Conduct being able to hold Mangleyu back. Tried to recycle her back, but Mangleyu is just a force to be reckoned with. Was able to physically move her up, get to that 20 feet, and had to let her go. Meanwhile, now she's on the outside line. Soli Dodd is her last line of defense. She's on her scoring pass. Meanwhile, DC still not able to spring Marion Barracuda, and Boston says, what the heck? We picked up five. We're going to go for some more. Fixing the hit. She did a great job right there putting her own body on the line. Absorbed those two front players, took the hit, took the fall, opened up a little bit of line for Mengliu. Right now, though, DC does get through the pack as Mengliu makes it to the front of the pack. Another four points up on the board. Maya Mengliu knew what was going on that entire time. She spun around, called that jam off after picking up four. That puts Boston in a 13 nothing lead with uh, just three minutes left, or three minutes gone by in this first period. And if you like what you see and you want to talk to us about it, Take us out on Twitter and hashtag talk to WFTDA. Once again, that's on Twitter, hashtag talk to WFTDA. Ivana Shankovic in the blue for Boston now. Barbara Bowie, 978 in the red for DC, your jammers. Close defensive pack right now going on. Oh, right through the outside, Shank is through. She is lead jammer, but right behind her breaking through. You see the pack solidifying now. That's where the action is when these jammers are rocketing through on their scoring pass now. We're going to have to see what Ivana Shankovic does. And she calls off that jam. She doesn't want to play games there, Rev. She calls it off. I think she doesn't like the fact that she called it off. She got that little hit. Definitely knocked the other jammer back out of bounds. Maybe she should have taken that extra step. This is where you really feel each other out. This next jam brought to you by Rydell Skates. Rydell Skates is the official skate of the WFTDA. Unmatched quality, unmatched performance. RydellSkates.com. Here's an unmatched performance. Little Payne again up against Jersey Jill. Little Payne on the line. This is Boston in the blue. DC All-Stars in the red. Little Payne breaking through. Soledad gets through the outside. Little Payne is your lead jammer. Lil Payne with that low center of gravity and powerful strides. She's making up a lot of distance in a short period of time, and she is on her scoring pass right now. She goes down, nice hit. Fixing the hit, she's doing a really good job at holding back my, with Maya Mangliu, Mangle, able to hold back the Jersey Jill. Five-point natural grand slam for Lil Payne. Jersey Jill still not through on her scoring or on her initial pass. Fixing the hit, you're doing an excellent job right there controlling the jammer. A new addition to the Boston roster this year. A welcome addition, no doubt, as Lil Payne in control of this jam calls it off. Rev, what do you see in the early going? Boston's being very calm. You saw Lil Payne right there, she turned around. Wasn't excited, called the jam off. They are really paying attention to their movement. They're not getting excited, that is great. The less excitement that you have, the means the less mistakes that you make out there. Right now, we have had a clear box. We have not had one person sent to the box, so it's a clear game so far. Playing clean, both of these teams. It's Space Invader getting ready to go for Boston. In the blue, Lenore Gore jamming for DC in the red. So they, far, DC has not had a lead jam in this bout, Rev. Once again, they won't. The Spaced Invader breaks through the middle. She's your lead jammer looking around. You're going to love that girl with her glasses, her geeky name. I love nerds that play roller derby. Oh, Lenore Gore gets a shot by Haley Contagious. It's called as a high block. She's going to have to sit down for that one. 
Lenore looked like she went down hard. She almost came up really slow, but she was able to jump through and she got through the pack. Space Invader being held at the back of the pack right now. Fixing the hit, she tried to open it up for her. Couldn't do it, Space has to call the jam. Four points up on the board though for Boston. Calls it off just in the nick of time. This next jam brought to you by Adam Wheels, a proud partner and official wheel of the WFTDA. Ginger Kid coming up onto the line for Boston. Looks like we have a really low pack now, which is we were just talking about how the bench, how the penalty box was empty, how quickly it fills up right now. We have a jammer in the box, so we do have a power jam. We have a Boston player, Haley Contagious, in the box. DC's got to watch it right here. This is the kind of situation that could break this game wide open. Ginger Kid, of course, has to be careful as well as she gets recycled to the back of the pack. Sully Dad doing a great job right now. It's slowing her down, making her have to fight her way through it. And that's still three blockers out there for DC. So that's a lot of bodies to try to push through. That's One more to go, and she does break through. Lead jammer now, Ginger Kid. Sully Dad, one of those veterans for DC that we were talking about at the beginning of the game. She's been with this league for at least five years. She knows the game of roller derby, Rev. Five point grand slam up on the board for the Ginger Kid. That they are taking major advantage of this power jam. That pushes the lead to 29-0 in favor of Boston. Eight, we're coming up on the eight minute mark here. Ginger Kid in control of this jam. Anorexia right now trying to open up a hole for the Ginger Kid. Anorexia, longtime veteran, six years in the league, played with Providence and played with Boston. Right there, huge hit on the Ginger Kid by Chinese Checker. Lenore Gore rejoins the action from the penalty box, but she has not made an initial pass as of yet. She's having a difficult time doing that in turn number two. Now she's through. Once again, Chinese checker just manhandling Ginger Kid on the back wall, and she finally decides to call off the jam. And if you gotta give a shout out to DC on that one, that was a pretty effective penalty kill. That way, that jam started off. Boston could have run away with the game, and DC sucked it up right there between Soli Dad and a couple of their other blockers and were able to hold that power jam in check, Rev. Absolutely defensive masterpiece right there by DC. Really able to stop the bleeding on that. Let's see if they can take that and turn it into an offensive strategy now. Lil Payne on the jam line. She gets through again. Lead jam Boston. Boston continues to own the beginning of these jams, Rev. It's like the power of those children sitting in the classroom a pumping on their teacher. You can't mess with a, with, a, with a Boston school system. Barbara Bowie jamming for DC, but she's still not through on her initial pass. As Little Payne comes through on the inside of turn number three, a five-point natural grand slam. Huge hit right there. That is Vixen to hit you, doing an excellent job defensively for Boston, as she has been a major player in every jam. 38 nothing the score in favor of Boston as Little Payne engages the pack again, picks up four more and calls it off. Barbara Bowie didn't even have the opportunity to get around the back side of that pack before Little Payne broke through again and called the jam. I tell you, Little Dane, Little Payne is an iron doll for Boston. She's and if you're interested in custom uniforms for the modern roller girl and referee, Check out Iron Doll Clothing. They've been lifting and separating since 2009. You know, I wouldn't really play with Iron Dolls. It'd be heavy, kind of awkward to play with. Maybe you drop it on your foot, you could hurt yourself. Back to the game, though. Maya Mangalu up there against Jersey Jill. Mangalu breaks right through Lee Jammer. 42 nothing in favor of Boston. I tell you, the early going, everything has been scripted Boston's way, right? Everything's coming up Beantown, as we like to say in the Massachusetts area. Jersey Jill is through. Mangle you, one more to go on the outside, breaks through. She's looking, looking at her bench and calling off the jam. Took a little hesitation there. Wasn't sure if they were gonna have her play on the, uh, 
pushing with her defensive line to see if they could hold her back, maybe get some more points up on the board, but wisely call the jam off. You're controlling the game. Don't take chances. Yeah, that's the meat and potatoes roller derby right there that Boston is known for, and when they step out to a lead like this, they're hard to come back on. Lenore Gore is going to try to change things up now in the red for D.C., going up against Ivana Shankovich in the blue for Boston. Shank looking for a line right away. Sully Dodd knocks it through. Can DC get their first lead jam tonight? No, it's not gonna happen now as Shank does break through and she is your lead jammer. Lenore Gore in hot pursuit. She's able to get through. And this will force a decision on the part of Ivana as she decides what she's gonna do. As she hits the pack on turn number three. Bodies go down, Chinese checker tripped up her own player there. Lenore Gore went down. Boston called it off, and DC wisely calling for a timeout. That is what they needed to do. They picked up their first two points on that one. Lenore Gore with the second effort, showing that DC is here to play. There, no question about that. But, Rev, what do they need to do? DC needs to refocus. Their defense is actually playing a really good game against Boston on the second pass. It's that first pass, that initial pass, that lead jammer status that they are throwing away. Boston. They have huge players right now. Soledad doing a great job holding back the wall. Chinese Checker doing an amazing job physically really hitting the girls to the outside line. They gotta bring it back. This The replay right there of her calling the jam off. That's the first excitement though I've seen from Boston today. They've been playing really calm. And I think that Boston playing calm is a dangerous, dangerous team. DC going to have to regroup and you see misjudgment sticks and stones having a word with them right now on the other side Boston showing a little bit of a uh, loose and uh, you like to see that ref if your money's on Boston that's exactly what you want to see during these timeouts the girls just talking with a score of 47 to 2 in favor of Boston. Once again, Boston in the blue, DC in the red. If you're watching us from home, welcome to the Eastern Regional Playoffs here through WFTDA.tv. It's the Sugar Bush Showdown. We are in Burlington, Vermont. We are happy to bring you the game number two in the East Region Playoffs. Marion Barracuda for DC fighting her way through and Spacey Invader caught in the back. This might be first lead jam for DC. Oh, she didn't get through clean. Oh, it was an improper pass. Pass the player out of bounds. Did not get the point. We're through. Boston once again gets lead jammer status. And Calls Sp off the jam wisely. We almost thought we saw it, Max. Spacey Invader showing top-notch strategy. If you're into uh, roller derbers, roller derby strategy there is actually a board game out there now for roller derby strategy it's jammer up you can play the first roller derby strategy board game based on modern day derby look them up jammerup.com somebody is going to turn that into a roller derby board slash drinking game before the weekend's over back to the action at hands dc once again trying to get their first Lead jammer status. Ginger Kid at the back of the pack, not able to break it through. DC has done it, ladies and gentlemen. They have opened up the can, and the whoop ass is about to begin. 47 2 in favor of Boston, but Ginger Kid still having a hard time getting through. She's finally through on her initial pass. DC right now trying to re enter the pack, get some points up on the board. Calling off the jam. Did they get any points on their status? They did get three points up in the air. First blood now for DC as they get on the board. They get that lead jammer status. Now they know they can do it. Barbara still... Bowie picks up lead jam and Jersey Jill looking to uh, re... Oh, look at that on the instant replay. Barbara Bowie got a big shot from Shark Week, but able to continue with her forward momentum. She always kept her legs moving. Always right? kept her legs moving, went down her knee twice, was able to stand up and still push through. This team is here, they're here to play. They've been together for like four years as a solid team. You know, they've been playing longer than that, but this team that we're looking at today are a four year veterans and they've slowly climbed the ranks of the Eastern region and now they are here and they're not just gonna throw it away today, Max. They're gonna play Boston, who's a team that is a perennial favorite in the Eastern region. They've made it to nationals. They're not gonna give it to them. 
They're going to have to fight for it. And you know the East, of course, those of you who are familiar with this region know that there are a lot of strong teams that didn't necessarily make the top ten. And a regional record of seven and three is nothing to laugh at. That is D.C.'s region record this year. So they're no stranger to victory, Rev. Absolutely not. 47-5 to five now, a little bit of a momentum switch, but DC probably doesn't like to see this official timeout right now. They got something going with those last couple of jams. They would like to keep the action rolling. We got 16 minutes and 20 seconds left as Little Payne getting ready to go against Jersey Jill. Absolutely, you don't want to see the momentum lose here. Once it's on your side, push through it. Let's talk about some of the big players so far in this game. I want to talk about uh, Vixen Ahitia, that girl is such an addition to the league. And you got to love how she pulls the ponytails out through the helmet. Um, Little Payne again playing for the kids at home, doing an excellent job so far. The whole back wall of Boston right now. Bad person. You can see her standing in the middle of the pack. One of those unsung heroes. She's always involved in every hit, every play. You just don't see it because she's in the middle of reabsorbing those jammers. Closing those lines, opening up the lines for the jammers. It takes a team to do this, and Boston has a team. And Boston has a two-skater pack disadvantage, but Little Payne doesn't seem to mind. She picks up lead, Rev. She don't need no advantage. <laughs> Little Payne breaks through. She is your lead jammer, though. Jersey yep. Jill coming right up behind her. Payne's going to try to do a cut and switch, get through quick and call off the jam. Let's see what her awareness is. Shark Week right there doing an excellent job. Not, oh, that's bad person. Doing an excellent job of holding Jersey down. Jersey, though, absorbed into the pack, so I know what Payne's thinking. She's going to try to break through the pack one more time. Bad person and Dixie Chicks there. Put it, Dixie Kicks, excuse me, really doing a great job of holding their own in the pack with just two skaters. Jersey Jill takes a big hit, stays up on her feet though. Little Payne having a very difficult time getting through this pack on the scoring pass. She's already scored once. She wants to get another score again as Jersey Jill is focusing around. They are now tying up on the pack presence. Payne should be calling off this jam. Decides she's not going to do it. Jersey Jill takes advantage. Here come the Points replacements. It's now a full pack again as Boston's two skaters get back in and Little Payne finally decides to call that one off. And that jam advantage DC. Absolutely, really surprised that Little Payne would allow that second pass of the pack and didn't call it off earlier. Doing an excellent job though. I mean, it's hard to tell where people are going to be. The track awareness is everything. Well, we got a shout out from Skelly Bean watching at home in Pennsylvania, Rev. And uh, she has kind words for us. And uh, we're happy that you're watching DC and Boston. Skelly, thanks for, so much for your kind words. Boston up 56 14. Here we go. Shank once again back out of the line for Boston at the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Huge hitting right now going on on the inside as the defense, as DC has woke up. Shank breaks through though, Soledad able to get through. She is your lead jammer. Lenore Gore stuck in the pack for DC. She's Boston, look, Boston's playing a really open pack as you notice. They're not playing that one wall, they're playing two walls of two. And when you think they're out, they pull you right back in. It's like a mob scene out there. And they know exactly where their teammates are. That's the only way that strategy works, Rev. The two-on-two -two is very dangerous. You don't have that one clear stop wall that you do when you play in the front wall or the back wall, but it is working very well for Boston, and they're able to recycle through. We're about at a little past the halfway mark in this first period. 13.30 left on the period clock. Boston with a solid 60 to 14 lead right now. Spacey Invader ready to go for Boston or for Boston against Marion Barracuda wearing the star for DC. Marion Barracuda trying to find her way through. Really held up at the back of the pack. Boston once again gets through. Lee Jammer's status up there, Spaced Invader. DC has the defense. They get so close to being able to reabsorb them. Boston doing an excellent job at stretching out that 20 feet and ended up getting the let go. 
Yeah, this is a, a solid defensive team meeting a offensive team that really understands each other's capabilities. And, and they have great pack awareness, Gus Boston. Spaced Invader decided at the last second calling off the jam. It looks like she had skated by the Boston bench. They actually told her to go. Then as she turned broke around turn number three they said no bring it back stop it now and sometimes it gets a little unusual on the derby track and that's where derbyology comes in they are purveyors of the derby unusual they're not crazy rev they just like derby look them up online at derbyology.com barbara Bowie up on the line against lil pain little little pain is getting worked tonight she's already She's already jammed here, uh, five jams, 25 points up on the board for Little Pain so far. Well, both of these teams have uh, definitely done their conditioning work. It shows in the way they're skating. It bears repeating, though, that the uh, winner gets a date with Philly at 8 p.m. tonight. You know, and who wouldn't want a date with the Philly Roller Girls? I know I would. Maybe not necessarily on skates, but I'm pretty sure Little Pain and the Boston Derby Dames are looking forward to that moment should it arrive. Lil Payne picks up lead jammer Barbara Bowie trying to make up some room now. She's got about a straightaway between her and Lil Payne as Lil Payne engages the pack. Comes through on the inside, calls off the jam. We're going to see if Barbara Bowie picked anything up. She did not. Another productive jam for Lil Payne of the Boston Massacre. It's not only great awareness of the jammer, but great awareness of your own defensive line that they were able to hold her back for just that few seconds, allowing you to fight that front line to get those points up on the board. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned to WFTDA-TV. Our next bout is the one many of you all over the world have been waiting for for almost a year, Montreal versus London. The recap, the sequel, it'll be a bilingual call in English and French. Shank is through, she is your lead jammer, untouched, unscathed. Oh, huge bud. body's going down right there. It looks clean, don't see anybody going to the box as Ivana Shankovich comes through on the other side. Five point grand slam for Boston. Shank is really trying to pull a penalty right now. Getting around the jammer, she has all the power in her hands. Take the swing, take the opportunity. If it doesn't work, you have the ability to call the jam off. Great play right there by Shank. That came directly from the coach of Boston. I saw him calling that out to her. Pull the penalty, try to get her to pull something in on you. You have the opportunity to stop if you want to. 73 Boston, 14 DC, just past the 10 minute mark in this first period. DC needs something and they need it right now. Boston down only two blockers. DC has three blockers out on the board. Here's that replay. Oh, we're back to live play here though, as you're gonna see. Right through the, on the outside line, DC All-Stars. Marion Barracuda out in front. She's lead jammer, Ginger Kid not through yet for Boston. Soledad's gonna have to let her go, but this is a scoring pass now for DC. Scoring pass, but this Vixen to hit you, Vixen to hit her. She does break through, four up on the board. Barracuda looks over to the bench, calls that jam off. It's a four point hit and quit for DC. That's just what they need. They don't need to make up this entire lead at the, between now and the end of the period, but they need to start taking control and chipping away, Rev. Exactly, a, a four point, you might say, oh, it's only a four point jam. That was a controlled jam by DC. That's what they needed to do is start controlling the jams one at a time. That's their first successful um, Gives them non defensive eight. jam. Gives them 18 points. Boston, however, with 73. Lil Payne wearing the star for the ladies in blue, the Boston Massacre. She has been unstoppable so far. This time she gets through first, but she is not lead jam. That honor goes to Barbara Bowie, who alertly calls it off right away. Another defensive jam 
for D.C., but that's what they need to do. Well, they, they, they need to, they're controlling the defense. They're doing a really good job there. They now need to get the offense back to go. Forgot the word offense a few moments ago. Don't know how I did that. But they really need to start pushing an offensive line now. They're down 73 to 18. This is where D.C., that plays very meat and potatoes roller derby, needs to start taking some chances. D.C., an experienced team, and experienced derby skaters can get you the right gear to take you to the next level at www.derbyforall.com. Here we go. First jam of the morning for Duel Hittison in red. Shane goes down. Duel Hittison's got one more to go, and Vixen to hit you. Now she's coming up on the double line. She is your lead jammer out of the out of the nowhere land, Duel Hittison. Finally, Ivana Shankovich able to get through, but Duel Hinnison coming around on turn number four. She's engaging the pack. Got a couple to beat, Maya Mangliu, and Duel Hinnison looking for her hips. She finds them, calls it off. How many is she gonna get? She picks up three for DC, Rev. DC, two good defensive jams in a row. 73 to 21 in favor of Boston in the blue, DC in the red, but DC is starting to show that they are coming back in here. Ginger Kid looking to exhort her fans. A lot of Boston fans in the audience, but I tell you, we got a pretty full house here, Rev. And I see a lot of DC fans too. Absolutely, the Boston, Boston, pinch, pinch, pinch. Chance starts in the cheap seats. And we have a timeout on the track. This one brought to you by Two and One Skate Shop. Check out the Bracket Bonanza sponsor, Two and One Skate Shop. You can take 10% off your entire order at the shop when you use the coupon code Bonanza during checkout. Two and One Skate Shop. Shock the competition. Few quick stats to throw at you. Jam so far, a little pain in the lead with 29. After that, it goes 13 for Ginger Kid, 13 for Maya Mangu, Space Invader with eight. Beautiful right there, Dual Hittison calling off that jam. And she was fighting her way through that. Really good job with Dual Hittison. I'm surprised that's her first jam of the night. I think we're gonna start to see her a lot more at the end of this first half and definitely in the second half. Powerful skater, and you saw when she came around turn number three as she picked up lead exceptional balance too because she did take a shot from a Boston blocker and was able to make it on one skate around turn number three in order to pick up lead. It's 73-21 in favor of Boston. Marion Barracuda on the jam line for DC. Ginger Kid ready to go for Boston. There you see the Boston bench. They don't seem too worried right now, Rev, but this DC group came to play. Marion Barracuda out in front. She picks up lead again for DC. That's four in a row for DC. DC really starting to pick it up here offensively. Just what we said needs to happen. Ginger Kid, the big swing, turn around. And there goes Marion Barracuda for a natural grand slam before Ginger Kid can even complete her initial pass. Chinese checker doing a great job of holding Ginger Kid back as long as she could. Shark Week now going right after the jammer. Now's where Marion Barracuda's got to be careful, and she is. She calls off the jam, and DC clawing back into this thing. That's another three points for the ladies in red. Getting back into this thing, 73 to 29 now. So far, we talked about the clean game we had. We've had a very clean game so far. Only two trips to the box for Haley Contagious. One for Anorexia, one for Dixie Chicks, Maya Manguliu at one. Few other players have one, but there's not a lot of trips going into the penalty box so far. That's another thing that when you have experienced teams like this playing, Rev, you know, they don't need to resort to illegal conduct, and they know the difference. Exactly. It comes down to the refing crew that you have in your hometown. Are they teaching you the right rules as you're playing the game? Are you able to practice with the right rules? Meanwhile, Both of these teams have a really solid ref crew. Meanwhile, Maya Mangle you on her scoring pass for Boston, and she puts the kibosh on that run by DC. Barbara Bowie finally gets through, but she's got a lot of room to make up before she's in a scoring position. Definitely a beautiful inside jump there. It wasn't necessarily an axis jump. It's more of that one leg up. Able to break through again for another three points up on the board. Tried pulling in a little penalty there. Didn't happen. Jam called off. 
Four minutes, 42 seconds left on the period clock, and Boston hits back with a shot of their own right there, Rev. It's now 81 to 29. Jersey Jill ready to go for the ladies in red, the DC All-Stars, Ivana Shankovich for Boston. Looks like we have an official timeout. Right now, DC is starting to see a little glimmer of hope. The game is 81 to 29. That is not a huge differential. We see 60 point comebacks all the time in roller derby. DC is really done. They need to be done failing them out. They're doing an excellent job defensively. Now they need to turn on that offensive game. They've shown that they can do it. They've shown that their only weakness right now is that initial pass. If they can figure out a way to open up that line, they could get right back into this game. And with the uh, official timeout, that you know, that works to DC's advantage to some extent because they're able to regroup a little bit uh, during this time, and it won't cost them another timeout. They already called two timeouts to get to the situation where they are. And you know, obviously, if you're coaching a team in a uh, East Region number one game, you do not want to use two timeouts in the first period. Absolutely. Right now, we're looking at a micro pack out there for both Boston and D.C. Two and two, it looks like out there. That's uh, Vixen to hit you. And number 198. No, 1978. Who is that out there? We got That's Shark Week. Is that Shark Week out there? So it's Shark Week and Vixen to hit you, along with Shank on the jammer line so. for Boston. Don't forget, if you have anything you'd like to ask us or just want to chat, Give us a tweet at Talk2WFTDA. We will be happy to give a shout out to your viewing, viewing party or just answer your questions or say hello. Once again, Talk2WFTDA. Getting ready for action once again. There's more, almost more skaters in the penalty box than there are on the track. Not quite though. Jersey Jill versus Shank. Shank out there playing a little defensive line. Takes the inside and goes right through. She is your lead jammer. Fixing to hit you in Shark Week. Able to reabsorb back Jersey Jill. Ivana Shankovich with a nice move around Soledad. Soledad goes down though, and that's gonna be a low block major on Shark Week. She's gonna have to sit down. Jersey Jill in a scoring position but she's not going to get a chance to do it as Ivana Shankovich alertly calls off that jam after picking up four. Four and out. Absolutely great job right there by Shank. Maya Mangley now coming up onto the line for Boston. Marion Barracuda ready to go for D.C. All-Stars. And D.C. needs a lead jam. They need it now, Rev. They definitely need to turn the tide a little bit. You don't want to go into the locker room feeling beaten, and they're not beaten. 85 to 29, a lot can happen. We still have an entire half of roller derby. You want to set goals, and I think the goal for DC right now is they want to hold Boston under 100 for this period. If they can do that, they've got a legitimate shot of pulling this game out in the second period, and Marion Barracuda picks up lead for DC, and she puts them in the position to continue their comeback. She calls off the jam. That's a four to two advantage for DC. Called, exactly what they need to do. Called it off a little late as Boston, you get to the fourth whistle, that fourth whistle to score points, and she got her hips passed. You really have to have that awareness, but DC is definitely turning it back on. They're able to control, they need to play jam, jam roller derby. That is, forget about the game in, in its entirety. Go out there each each jam like it's the only jam of the night and work that jam out. Boston with only one blocker on the track, but several standing up in the penalty box. They're getting to re ready to come on in. Boston closer to a full pack. Little Payne continues to own lead jam, Rev. I wonder if those kids are actually watching this game at school right now. If they are, there's a school that is shaking a lot somewhere in Boston. Little Payne breaks right through the middle. One more to go. She is through past Dual Hiddison. She's looking back, looking for a little guidance from the bench. She's going to let it roll, Rev. And Lenore Gore hits the pack right now for DC. 
Lil Payne decides that uh, she can score some more. Lenore Gore picks up four for the ladies in red. Lil Payne now has her differential on top again. What Little Payne is doing right now is burning down the clock. She's saying, I can go four to four with them all day long. It stops them from being able to start another jam, to get a power jam or something like that to their advantage. It starts burning the clock down. Meat what? and potatoes roller derby for the Boston Massacre, ref. That's five more for Little Payne. 100 to 37, Boston exceed or is going to exceed that century mark if they pick up any more and there's a smart play too as you said run the clock at the end of the period sometimes i think people are too focused on calling off the jam as soon as the opposing team has an opportunity to score exactly what's right to do in one moment is what's wrong to do in another you start playing the third opponent who is the clock and boston is doing a great job they know that there's 20 seconds between the jam clock and the period clock, so run it down, and they might not be able to get the next jam off. They don't want to give something to DC. You gotta make them earn it, take it from them. And you gotta trust your defense, and in this situation, Lil Payne is trusting just two blockers. But she has complete trust in anorexia out there, along with number 357, Vixen to hit you, who's been having a whale of a, a game so far, Vixen Rep. Vixen to hit you came from Central Mass Roller Derby last year, a little tiny team in Massachusetts. I first saw her play when they played Providence last year, and I said, wow, this girl has talent. And it was one of those things that you say, it's too bad she's playing for a small team, not a lot of people. And the next thing I saw her, she's skating with Boston. That is the end of our first period right now. Great what? job so far by Boston, but DC really surprising me, staying in there a lot stronger than I thought they would. DC hits 50, it's a 54 point game right now. One power jam to start this second period and it's anybody's run. Welcome back to the second period of Boston versus DC. We want to give a quick shout out to the folks watching in the Wasatch chat room, Rev. The Wasatch Cannonball. Oh yeah. You gotta give a shout out to them and what a first half we've seen so far for roller derby. I'll personally, I'll tell you, I, I don't mind putting myself out there. I thought this was going to be an annihilation on the side of Boston. DC, though, is showing that they are not willing and ready to lose this game as they really started to come back on the second part of that first period, control some of those bouts, get offensively back in the game, still be able to control the defense. I'm really, I'll be really, really um, into seeing what they do in this second half. Were they able to alter the game? They got to come out strong, no doubt about that. DC able to pick up 50, and at the beginning of this, uh, at, of the first period, it would have been a question whether they could have hung within 54 points of Boston. But it's been obvious so far. Neither of these teams came just to show up at the region playoffs. They want to progress. They want to move on in the winners bracket. Rev, absolutely, Boston. Did an excellent job in the first period. Very few mistakes. Low penalty count. Low trips to the box. Both teams doing really good there. Little sloppy at the end of the first half, but when the bodies get tired, you start incurring a few more penalties. So they got to go back. They got to rest. I know Senior Macho Solo probably getting inside the head of the Boston, bringing them back down, calming them down, because Boston plays a better game when they're relaxed. They can keep the excitement level down. They play that meat and potatoes roller derby, second to none. Intensity has been the word, though. Both of the, as, as calm as Boston has been, they've been an intense calm, if that makes any sense. And DC, intense on defense from the beginning, but they started to show offensive intensity at the end of this first period. Absolutely, DC really just started to show themselves a couple extra rotations of their jammer um, rotation really started to work out. Now we're looking, Boston's gonna go right back to the meat and potatoes with Shank coming up onto the line against Jersey Jill. Jersey Jill had a very good first period for DC. Both teams with two timeouts as this second period 
gets underway. Jersey Jill, for those of you just tuning in, of course, DC in the red, Boston in the blue, and that's Shank wearing the star for the Boston Massacre. I am the Reverend Almighty once again. This is Max the Axe sitting alongside of me. And Boston in blue, DC in red. Here we go. Bodies already going tight as Shank. Jersey Jill and Shank trying to fight their way through. And Shank picks it up. She's lead Gina Emmer, Jersey Jill still fighting through that pack. Boston doing a good job of water falling around her at the front. Still not through. Now finally is Jersey Jill, but Shank checking out the pack in her scoring run. Nice booty block. Shank takes a little bit of a hit, takes a fall, gets back up. Calls off the jam after scoring three up on the board for Boston. DC seemed to start out that game with a much tighter pack, pulling everybody in close to that line, eliminating those holes. I think what their, their, their game is, is, as we were talking about before, don't think about the entire second half. Think about the next jam. Focus on the next jam, the next jam only. Start to get control. We saw them on like a five jam run in the second half. You see the look on Lenore Gore's face right there. She's looking for her hole as the jam takes off. Lenore Gore in red for DC. And it's Mangle jamming for Boston. Mangle able to get through on the inside as Vixen to hit you continues her defensive work, Rev. Anorexia and Vixen to hit you, the one-two punch of the Boston Derby Dames right now, doing an excellent job of recycling back those jammers. Lenore Gore trying to make up some room. She's going to have to keep those legs moving if she's going to pick up any points. And got a scrum, no points for DC, and three for Boston. Lenore was trying to get one. She's holding up one finger, but they're not giving it to her. I don't think she passed. It's hips versus hips. I think she was right there, but as you go, as she was kind of fumbling over her own player, she lost the advantage. Well, you wouldn't be a jammer if you didn't think you got around that exactly. skater, though. She wanted it, and uh, she's make, she's pleading her case. That's, that's perfectly okay. Marion Barracuda getting ready to go for D.C., and it's Space Invader for Boston, caught in the back right now. Let's see if Marion Barracuda can take advantage. She does not. Space Invader with a lot of power there, Rev. Space Invader does not look for the line. She makes the line. She creates the hole and fights her way through it. Did an excellent job right there. Ginger Kid right now, and Bad Person makes a huge hit right there on her. Marion Barracuda finally gets through, but Space Invader deep in the pack on a scoring run for the Massacre. She's got time to let things develop. Space an excellent one-legged skater. She's able to really keep up her, her uh, balance on one leg. If you look at the musculature in her legs, that girl is not skating hard. She's skating strong. If you want to talk directly to thousands of Derby fans, what you want to do is advertise on WFTDA TV. They have affordable packages. They're available for your business, boot camp, or tournament advertising. Visit WFTDA.com sponsor opportunities to learn more. Meyer up on the line against Barbara Bowie. Another way to talk to us is hashtag talk to WFTDA, and you can talk to us all right now. 114 to 50 in favor of Boston. Not much action on the part of DC as Mangle gets through strong for Boston. And Boston took that period time out. Oh, this is a game changer right here, Rev. Major back block from Mile Mangle, you sending her off to. The penalty box this is going to put Barbara Bowie into a perfect situation. But Anorexia and Mod Forbid are going to do everything she can. Right there, huge hit. Bowie able to break through. She's not going to be a lead jimmer. A lead jimmer was, has already been called. So we're going, to, we're going the full two. This could be exactly what DC needs. They're forced to play the entire two minutes of this jam now. Barbara Bowie gets a shot from Shark Week. Takes her to the inside of turn number one. Shark Week saying, here I am back here. Come to the back of the pack. Barbara Bowie's got to regroup now, Rev. Definitely not where she wanted to be as Dottie Danger. And Shark Week controlling the back of the pack. First power jam in a while. And Boston doing a great job of killing this penalty, Rev. 
Excellent meat and potatoes roller to be doing everything textbook style. Boston has completely stopped DC at their only run of the evening so far. And Mangle back on the track now. She's got a head of steam. She's got an agenda. She passes Barbara Bowie and picks up five points for the massacre. They actually came through that out 5-4 on the jam. That is an amazing defensive accomplishment by the Boston Derby Dames. Mangle keeps that forward motion for the massacre. The ladies in blue, if you're just tuning in, are the Boston Massacre. They're going against Red DC All-Stars, and that is it. The jam times out, 119. 59 in favor of Boston, and we're going to roll on some more points, Rev. I love when they have to, when they're forced to play the two minutes, when there's no lead jammer, and they have to rely on their skill, their ability, and their defense on the other t uh, of their team to really shout out. And they both did an excellent job, but I got to give it up mostly right there to Boston for being able to hold back DC to only four points on that jam. We want to welcome our fans in Australia. They say welcome to the future. And I tell you what, the present is pretty darn exciting right now as Lil Payne gets through once again for lead jam for Boston. Lenore Gore is chasing her down, but Lil Payne has been showing all night tonight that she is the jammer to be reckoned with out there for Boston. Lenore Gore entering the pack alongside Lil Payne. Oh, huge hit right there as Vixen goes down hard. She's going to get back up on herself. Look at little Payne there. She's uh, she's into this. I mean, you say that Boston likes to play calm, Rev, and I think you're right. But uh, that little fest pump on the part of Lil Payne shows that she is completely focused on this bout. Absolutely. We saw Vic, uh, Vixen go off to the, uh, go off to the side uh, holding her shoulder. I hope she'll be all right. That's right, the winner of this meets Philadelphia at 8 p.m. tonight. So, I mean, set your derby clock, folks. Coming up next, of course, right here at WFTDA-TV is Montreal versus London. And we've got action now, an extended pack as this jam begins. Boston picks up lead once again, and it's Mangle, number 111 in blue. Chinese checker just made her feel like she ran through the backside of a wall. She got the points. Oh, no, she got called out there. And we're going to have a flip-flop in the jammer situation right now as Mangle's going to have to sit down. Lenore Gore is going to be sprung. This springing her. She's waiting for the refs to call her. They finally do call her. She's heading out there, Lenore, but there's a three wall right there for Boston. They're not going to let her go easy. We already saw what their defense does in a power jam two jams ago. Lenore Gore, though, fought her way through there. She's made her initial pass. Let's see if she can get some points. Looks like Vixen's okay from that injury because she's right back she's on right the She's right back board. on the track. That's right. Lenore Gore with a nice burst on the outside. She's showing those strides. A lot of power in a tight, wiry frame. Lenore Gore for DC. Now she's on her own as Soledad and Stabigail Adams are trying to coax that no-pack call. Anorexia doing an amazing job right there. Low hits. Mang low Excuse me. Mangle back on the track. We got two jammers once again. But Lenore Gore picks up a five-point grand slam for D.C. In case you were wondering, D.C. is not going away in this bout, Rev. Absolutely. D.C. wearing the red because they're ready to leave all the blood right on the track. Boston now. Another five-point grand slam up on the board. Maya's doing an excellent job. Chinese, Chinese checker, checker, though, excellent, the holding back that line. How about that for quality on the part of D.C.? Bont is the only quad boot manufacturer with carbon fiber and fiberglass counters. Their one-piece handmade from the inside-out manufacturing technique offers the lightest and strongest boots on the market. www.bont.com.
Going out to Vulgar Vixen. What does meat and potatoes mean when I'm talking about meat and potatoes roller derby? Talking about the basics, everything you need to survive. That is the, the basic textbook strategy roller derby. When I talk about the meat and potatoes of it, it means that they're playing basic, strong, and everything that you need to continue to move on. And Boston today is playing, well, should I call it beans and meat? Roller Derby as Beans Boston. and Franks. Beans and Franks Beans Roller and Derby Franks as the Boston derby. staple of meat and potatoes. <laughs> Little pain coming back up on the line. You look at her going over her shoulder, looking at the play clock, looking at the uh, timeout that's going on right now. Yeah. She is ready to rock it. The meat and potatoes is also the awareness of the situation at any given time on the track. And both of these teams are showing that, Ref. I mean, D.C., 78 points they've been 78 hard fought points and they remain within striking distance we got 20 minutes left and a little bit of change there's the dc bench right now you can see it in their eyes they know they're in this game they want to continue to push the advantage off the jam line absolutely the penalty box is a little full right there boston's starting to get tired they're starting to make some mistakes Haley Contagious, and it looks like Ginger Kid in there right now. For Boston, going to be a 4-2 to two pack in favor of D.C. D.C. is definitely still not out of this game. And the, with the intensity that they're playing at, I expect one or two big jams to come out of them before this game is over. Lil Payne jamming for Boston now as Jersey Jill has to go back behind the jam line. We don't have a no-pack situation just yet. There it's called Artemis Conduct draws it out Jersey Jill going up against Lil Payne Lil Payne just showing so much savvy today Rev Lil Payne plays an incredible game she keeps her arms down by her side doesn't swing them she's almost like walking her way through a pack and it works every time she gets that lead jammer status thrown at her more than any other skater on the Boston roster Jersey Jill able to complete her initial pass now, but Lil Payne in charge of this one for Boston. They don't call him the massacre for nothing. Lil Payne again takes a nice slow stance. When this girl is calm, when she is not being rushed to push, she is one of the most dangerous players in the game. Deadly effective. Known to her students, of course, as Miss Leiter, but known to Derby fans worldwide, and we have several watching right now as Lil Payne for the Boston Massacre. Lil Payne now calls that one off. Do you think the kids actually would not show up with homework with Lil Payne as your teacher? <laughs> like, I forgot my homework, Miss Leiter. <laughs> that would just, you know, that would, I'm pretty sure that those children in that class are well behaved and well kept. <laughs> And they probably do their reading assignment with Blood and Thunder magazine. They are the world's first and largest roller derby magazine. Find them online at www.bloodandthundermag.com. Spaced Invader going up there tonight against Marion Barracuda. 138 to 83 now. As Beautiful we, timeout right there as we saw a little pain. Look at the intensity on her face right there. She's just so focused on this game. You wouldn't believe that they were up by 50 points by the way she's playing. It's still jam for jam. Yeah. And, well, we've seen D.C. They have the ability to do it. A couple of lead jam pickups right now, and they change the momentum of this game. Violent Vixen, they're looking into the eyes of who I am calling the defensive player of this game so far, the MVP. Violet Vixen, like I said, she came from Central Mass Roller Derby. A couple years ago, I saw her for the first time and went, wow, this girl is playing an excellent game. I'd love to see her a part of a bigger program. And next thing I knew, she was playing for Boston. It's 138 to 83 in favor of Boston. As the jam starts, and Marion Barracuda picks up lead for DC. Space Invaders chasing her down hard, but Barracuda possibly able to get in there and start doing something for DC but wisely calling off the jam 0-0 as she saw Space Invader coming on full throttle. You got to call that a win for Boston but DC showing they know how to pick up lead that's every bit as important. There's plenty of time left Rev 1831 in this second period 138 to 83 in favor of Boston. Lenora Gore coming up on the line for DC. Little pain out there for Boston. Look at Sully Dad pacing back 
and fourth down. So many blockers trying to find it. But Payne does find that hole every time she skates. Look at her, head looking back, always over her shoulder, knowing where she is, arms down tight, keeps that body compact. It's all that CrossFit these girls are doing these days. Lenore Gore makes it through on her initial pass, but she's got half a track between her and Lil Payne. Lil Payne says hello to Soledad. Soledad knocks her down. That's a defensive win for DC, holding Lil Payne to zero points. She ran into the backside of Soledad. That's like running into the backside of a Cadillac. You take the hit, you come up, call it off. Great awareness, though, as to where the other team was and where it was going. Haley Contagious coming up onto the line, letting the crowd know she's there. First jam of the day for Haley Contagious, and we have a timeout called on the track by Boston. That gives us an opportunity to let you know about Five Stride. They are online, in store, in the city that never sleeps. Roller Derby gear extraordinaire owned by Bonnie Thunders and OMG WTF of the Dop of the Gotham Roller Girls. Look them up online at fivestride.com. You see right there the attack on the backside of, or the front side, a little pain by the backside of Sully Dad. Little Payne did a great job trying to hold herself off. But did you see her ability to, she's calling off that jam, looking at every referee in their eyes. Look at me, look what I'm doing. That is part of this game is not just to be able to call off the jam to know exactly where you are, where the refs are, where the other players are. That girl has played this game only for a few years, and she has made herself one of the best players in the country, in my opinion. DC bench there looking out anxiously. They know they've got 17.25 now, 17 minutes and 25 seconds to make up 55 points. It's 138 to 83 in favor of Boston. It looks like we had called Haley Contagious out to the jammer line. After that timeout, they send back the big guns. Little Payne, who's now stepping right in front of Jersey Jill. Jersey Jill looks for a little bit of room on the outside. Can't find it. Meanwhile, Little Payne continues her pattern all game long. Lead jammer, Boston. Jersey Jill was able to make it outside the pack. Little Payne looking back over her shoulder. Knows exactly where she is. Goes into attack. Chinese checker is in the front there. Little Payne going side to side with her. Decides to call off the jam as she was pushed in, but not before scoring four points. 4-0, four hit and quit. That's safe. That's smart. Hey, it's comfy, and you can talk and breathe if you if you have a only S-I-S-U, C-S-U mouth guard. How about that, Rev? Try saying that with that mouth guard in. <laughs> you know, I bet you could do it. I think that, I bet you I think could that needs it. to be the next roller derby game, is to be able to say that with the mouth guard in. This, na this next jam brought to you by the CSU mouth guard. Thanks for sponsoring WFTDA TV. Back to live action. Space Invader versus Marion Barracuda. Marion Barracuda for DC in the red. Space Invader out there for Boston in the blue. Right there, Boston doing an excellent job of recycling back Marion Barracuda. Space Invader was able to walk through the outside line. She is your lead jammer. Boston looking to extend their lead. They have 142-83 over D.C. right now. And Marion Barracuda still not through the pack on an initial pass. Dixie kicks, sends Marion Barracuda on the inside. That's going to earn her a major forearm. She's going to have to sit down. So Lois Lane, Dixie kicks, Haley Contagious. The box is filling up like somebody's giving away free bear or something over there. Meanwhile, Space Invader hitting the pack on another scoring pass. She's got Soledad to beat. That's not an easy task. Soledad has definitely been the defensive player for Washington. But she's going to have to let Space Invader go. That's four more for Boston. And right now, every point Boston scores is uh, giving them a little closer to a game with Philly, Rev. Space Invader makes the jump, but she gets knocked out of bounds, comes back in between behind Hoover and Chinese Checker. Chinese Checker, probably the most physical player on DC. She's definitely the one with the power hits, able to give a good shot. Not as big of a body as some of the other girls have, but you wouldn't know it by the hit you take. Meanwhile, Barracuda came back out, got recycled into the pack. Put some points up on the board as they got a point for DC. Jam times out, 154 Boston, 93 to D for DC. DC hanging around, Rev. 
They're not going anywhere. They don't want to go down. Here's the replay right now of Space Invader getting that double chop up behind Sully Dad, trying to fight it off. Meanwhile, if you look to the inside, she gets through, gets that lead jammer status. And that was a beautiful opportunity there to see how Space Invader with that long frame was able to deflect the impact of that shot. Because you know that Soledad is coming with a serious hip check there. Absolutely. Space Invader, if you looked at the size of her quads, that girl does some squats. This isn't just about working out in the roller derby world, playing, you know, being on skates. She goes out there and she hits the track. She plays hard, hard. Uh, roller derby, and then she hits the gym, and she definitely plays hard in there. And we have an official's timeout called on the track. No, it's a timeout for DC, actually. Oh, my bad. They called it. They haven't taken it off the board yet, but it looks as though they're calling a DC timeout. We're listening to the WFTDA referee microphone now. We'll get the official word from them in just a second. Well, I believe they officially said that it was a referee timeout, not the DC timeout. There you see the, we are ready to go now. Lenore Gore, but DC cannot pick up lead. They cannot get back in this game, Rev. Absolutely, Ginger Kid just walks right through an open hole there. DC starting to fall apart a little bit. It's making it a little too easy for Boston. You can't do that with Boston. Ginger Kid just inside steps. That was a beautiful piece of work by Ginger Kid. Lenore Gore still not through the pack on her initial pass. Boston ahead, 158 to 93 with 13.59 left. How about that one for Ginger Kid? Ginger Kid easily steps over the inside axis. Five-point grand slam up on the board. Now the players are coming out of the box for DC. They're back up to three blockers on the on the track, including Sully Dad. Lenore Gore needs that help as Ginger Kid hitting the pack for her third scoring pass. And she continues to move forward, but now she's going to have to move into the penalty box on a low block. Heading out to the penalty box, definitely going to put a power jam situation for Lenore Gore, but Lenore Gore still hasn't been able to make her initial pass, and we see what Boston does in a power jam. They're going to Lenore get Gore gets through now for five. She must have gone. Oh, I do apologize. She made that initial pass earlier on. Five-point jam. Let's see that. now if Boston can hold her back. Definite opportunity for D.C. to get back some of those points that were just scored DC. by Ginger Kid. DC needs this right now. This is going to bring them to within 60 points. There's plenty of time. That's 12.48 left. It's 163 Boston, 103 DC. And Lenore Gore looking to pick up five more. I'll tell you what, when you pick up points five at a time, you can make up a lot of ground, Rev. Absolutely. Only two seconds left. She's not going to get into that pack again. She's going to try, though. She continues to hit the pack, and she picks up. Two four more. more. Yeah. And it's, now that four is the Boston call for those points. She got another two on the inside. Great job right there, Lenore Gore. That girl is tired, hands on the knees, down. They have been playing right now 48 minutes of roller derby. This isn't like going to your local uh, you know, roller rink and skating around in a pack. This is ha a hard physical sport. They've been doing an excellent job right now. 48 yeah. minutes into it, this is where you really start to build on that endurance. This is where you really get to see what your team is doing for off-skates conditioning. Dual Hittison on the jam line for Boston, and for DC, excuse me, but she's gonna be called back as we have an official's timeout called. As you were saying, now's the time that you need to make sure not only is your fitness at the top, but your nutrition as well. And if you are interested in extending your roller derby nutrition, look up Derba Life. Derba Life is proud to sponsor this next bout at Jam for WFTDA TV. They are available online, www.derbalife.com. I've actually used Derbalife in the past. It's a great product. Everybody knows I'm a fitness freak. I love going to the gym. I love working out. Nothing better in the morning. Never skip breakfast. Grab yourself the Derbalife shake and head on out the door. 
11.49 left as we have an official's timeout called. This one's going to matter, Rev, and this gives both of these teams an opportunity to catch their breath. Looks like Ginger Kid, that's a play back from two, two uh, plays ago. Ginger Kid jumping away through the inside. Looks as though there was just an error on the whistles in this last timeout that they're just resetting them. When they blew the whistles, only one set of whistles blew and everybody went. So they're just resetting everybody. They're probably going to reset a clock. We'll see. On the jam line, Lil Payne. She is tireless for Boston. And Dual Hennison ready to go. It's just going to be her second jam of the bout, Rev. But uh, she was pretty productive in her first. Absolutely. I'm actually surprised that they haven't pulled her out on the jammer line, except that she is a very good defensive player. But you have your bigger girls out there. You have Chinese Cheggy. You have Soledad. To, you know, you have uh, some really good Hoover Dam. So maybe it's time to put her out there and start pushing her as a jammer because she is a physical jammer. Little pain caught in the back for now, but little pain able to bounce off a hit. She gets through. She's not lead jam. A uh, improper pass is the call. Now lead jam goes to Dual Hennison, who alertly calls it off. Smart play. You don't want to give up any more points at this stage of a fairly close game, Rev. Haley Contagious heading off to the penalty box for a low block. That is her fifth penalty tonight. At seven, you get told to leave the building. Ejected from the game, taken off the course. That's something that uh, is definitely going to be a factor as we wind down to the last 11 minutes of this one. Boston holding on to a 167-108 lead. Barbara Bowie has to sit down now for DC. Jersey Jill in red, jamming for DC. She picks up lead jam. And could this be the comeback that DC needs? Sully Dad doing an excellent job of holding Ginger Kid back. One on one, taking on Ginger Kid. Ginger Kid breaks through. She is now out there now going one on one against Jersey. Jersey's out there. I'm not sure why she's not calling off this jam. There is no benefit at all to DC to letting that clock run down even a second. And she does eventually call off the jam. But you're right, Rev, every, at five seconds at this point in the bout for DC is huge as Marion Barracuda gets ready to go against Lil Payne for Boston. We want to thank another sponsor of this bout, Five on Five Mag. We haven't seen Five on Five Roller Derby for quite a while, and this yeah. one is the penalties are starting to add up. But Five on Five is the Women's Royal Flat Track Roller Derby magazine. The subscriptions are available at www.5on5mag.com. Little Payne versus Marion Barracuda. Little Payne pushed to the outside. Barracuda trying to fight her way through that front line right there of Boston as we're looking for the two on two mini pack, I like to call it, in Roller Derby. Lil Payne. Payne on the inside of turn number two, trying to get through, but Marion Barracuda is through first. She's not lead, though. Now, Little Payne had just gotten lead jammer status a few moments before. Now, Little Payne wisely, uh, well, no, on the opposite side. But Little Payne was in an opportune situation right there where she could have let the clock dribble just a little bit more before calling off the jam. There was no threat of points being scored for a moment. Let that five seconds drop off. Call off the jam. Start to use the third player on the track. Who is the time? Who is if, the clock? If you're Boston, the clock is your friend right now, and it continues to roll. 8.50 left in this second period. Boston holding on to a 167-113 lead. Space Invader getting ready to go against Dual Hinnison for DC. Oh. Dual Hinnison almost had the inside track, but Dixie kicks. Knocked her off of it, Rev. Beautiful job by Dixie Kicks coming right through. Oh, Boston, major track cut. Sending her off to the penalty box. Space is heading out. Space talking back a little bit. We're going. Is there a lead jammer? Yes, there is. Dual Hennison is your lead jammer. And this DC is, exact, is in a perfect. This oh. is exactly what DC was hoping for as the penalty box is full of blue jerseys. And Dual Hennison gets through for a grand slam, Rev. Great trap right now on the back wall there of Soledad. Holding back Boston, Dixie Kicks got nowhere to go. Dual Hennison fights it through. Major back block, she's heading off to the penalty box. They gotta release the Boston Jammer, Space Invader gets back on. DC just threw that jam away. It's sorry, hate to see it happen like that. 
the the strategy giveth and the strategy taketh away. Dual Hittison would love to have that one back. She just got a little bit too excited engaging that pack, Rev. You touch that pack, you cannot put your skate with your arms out like that. One well, perfect example is Little Payne. When you watch her, her arms stay down by her side, no matter what her legs are doing. It's a smart play. Now, Dual Hittison will rejoin the action but Space Invader on a scoring pass for Boston. It's 167, 118. Dual Hennison picks up four more though as DC continues to play defense. They've got their fans excited, Rev. Absolutely, right now they're able to hold back Space Invader. They got her buried deep inside the pack. Dual Hennison is doing an excellent job at jamming. I'm really questioning where she's been through this game. She's she leaving it all out on the track. She got knocked hard by anorexia, but she's back up. Meanwhile, Space Invader looking to extend the Boston lead. That's it, the jam time's out. 172 for Boston, 127 for DC. DC not going anywhere. Hang on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. DC seems to do great when they do not have the opportunity to call the jam off and they have to play the full two minutes. It's like, they don't have to overthink it. They just go, we're here for two minutes and there's no stopping it, let's go. At this point, anytime they get lead jammer status, that might be want to be their goal. Just play it out, play each jam out to the end right now. And Barbara Bowie gets lead jam once again for DC as Lil Payne caught behind Hoover Dam. Barbara Bowie with a full head of steam. She's got to be careful here though, Al. And she calls it off. Again, good calling off the gym. It's a wise thing to do by the clock, but right as she had done that, Chinese checker had floored Little Payne. If she didn't call the jam off right now, Little Payne would be at the back of the pack. I'm not saying that's the way to play at textbook, but I'm saying at this point, when you're down by this many points, you have to take that chance. You have to believe that your defense will hold up and run for an offensive line and skate the full two minutes. Five minutes, 24 seconds left in this one. Boston up 172 to 27. It's Jersey Jill for DC going against the Ginger Kid for Boston. Ginger Kid being held in the back by Soledad, but she can only hold her for so long. Lead jammer DC once again, but these jammers are neck and neck. Now we gotta see Jersey Jill gonna call it off. Jersey Jill had to call it off there. There was no opportunity to race Ginger Kid to the pack. Ginger Kid actually started to take the lead. Not the time to roll the dice on that one. Absolutely, but you need to look for those opportunities. DC is really starting to take advantage. They're getting the lead jammer status. They're starting to control what's happening inside that tight pack. They need to take a chance now. It doesn't matter how much you lose by. The season ends for one of these teams tonight at this game, so let's figure it out roll the dice and go for it. And that's just what Coach Miss Judgment told me. She said they're leaving it all out. Man, you can see that in Marion Barracuda as she hits the pack. Lil Payne jamming for Boston. Lil Payne has been productive all bout long and she's productive again. She gets lead jam, Rev. Right now, little school kids in Boston are going crazy for their teacher, Lil Payne. And she has just racked up some serious points so far today, 60 points so far for Little Pain as she re-enters the pack on her first scoring pass. Jackie Mayday, one more to go, and she is through. Count them up five in the sky, Little Pain. Now the time is definitely Boston's uh, ally as Little Pain knows it, and she is not going to push the action any too much. She's just going to continue skating forward. She picks up five more. 3.36 now on the period clock, 107 on the jam clock. Boston up 182 to 127. This could be the jam that ices it for the Boston Derby Absolutely. Dames. Senor Macho Solo just told her, don't call it, slow down, skate slow. We have 52 seconds to this jam and we're gonna burn out every second of it. And Little Payne engages the pack once again. Meanwhile, how about the defense? You look in the back with Boston, Marion Barracuda still just being manhandled in turn number one. 
Major track cut there. Marion Barracuda heading off to the penalty box now. It's going to put Boston completely in control of this. They now have two minutes without a jammer. You know, a little pain right now is that open skate on a Saturday night. She's just posting around, skating around. She's going to burn off the 12 seconds. They're going to fight for lead jammer status in the next jam, and then they're going to end the game. 197, 127. Boston with a 70 point lead. That's five more for Lil Payne. That's going to bring Boston up to 202. And that's going to do it. The jam times out. DC wants a timeout to mount one last chance charge. And that gives us an opportunity to thank Union Vacations. They are your best way to save money for your league's travel. Union Vacations is proud to sponsor the uh, bout today and they're also proud to supply the winner of this year's bracket bonanza little pain going right through look at her fighting through that wall this is how you score 25 points in one jam in one jam folks you don't give up even when you're not skating at your full capacity because you she was just skating around to watch the clock go but every time she got to the back of the pack she fought through it 25 points on a leisurely day for little pain we also want to thank Green Monster, makers of Antic, Gumball Toe Stops, Heartless Wheels, Reckless Wheels, and Moto Bearings. Green Monster doesn't just give you great derby products, they give you confidence. Speaking of confident, you know Boston's got to be feeling pretty confident as they head away from D.C. to play their next game. But let's talk about another game, a game that's coming up next. The game that erupted the world of roller derby last year. Montreal versus London. They, I can't even do either accent correctly because I'm from Boston it, and we just trash everything that people say. It's the sequel, Rev, and it's coming up next right here on WFTDA TV. We've got a bilingual call for you in French and English. Meanwhile, Ginger Kid working against a determined DC defense. Ginger Kid just needs to make it through. This pack, take your time, incur no penalties. Make sure that you get that lead jammer status. Let them hold you back. Don't take any chances. She's got it. Boston is now able to burn down another 1 minute and 28 seconds of this game if they like. It doesn't matter who's coming out of the pack. It doesn't matter the other jammers standing. None of that matters now because all she needs to do is just keep skating. Just stay on her feet, keep moving forward, and, and maybe even a, a slightly perceptible pace. That's all that Boston needs to do. Little little jammer on jammer hit. Ginger Kid gets caught up in the moment, though. She, she she did a little more than what you said, Al. Oh, five points. You get once you get to the back of the pack, it's hard to hold the bridle. These wild vixens that they are are going to try to fight their way through. You got to let your thoroughbreds r run. There's no question about that. And Ginger Kid showing herself to be a thoroughbred today for Boston. No quit on the DC squad, that's for sure. Marion Barracuda back out in front, and uh, she's going to try and pick up a few more for the ladies in red as well as the jam clock rolls down. 30 seconds left on the jam clock, 47 left on the period clock. Boston ahead, 214, no, 216 to 127 for DC. Boston doing the right thing. It doesn't matter at this point. During the season, we all know it matters, not just win-loss, but how many points you won or lost by. It doesn't matter anymore. Now it's you're playing or you're out, and Boston is just slowly winding that clock down. They know another jam is going to start. DC's got a timeout. I can't see that they're not going to call it right at the end of this jam, and there it goes. DC is calling the timeout. They're going to take the moment. They want another jam. They came here to play high competitive roller derby, and even though they're down by almost 100 points, 99-point differential, they're still going to go out there and give it all in that last jam. They're always striving to exceed their expectations, just like Vanilla Derby. They are now available with upgraded Italian leather, VanillaSkates.com. Look them up online. Also sponsoring today's bout, S1 Helmets. They make the safest and the best helmets for roller derby. And uh, right there you see a little dejection on the DC bench. They came, they saw, they gave their all, Rev. 
they did an excellent job. I am very, very proud of the team that I've known for about four years and watched them grow, watched them stay together. I know, you know, people say, Rev Al, you're a bully. You say a lot of bad things about teams on, on the mic. I don't. I pick them apart because that's my job for the fans at home. But I have so much respect for D.C., their level of play and where they've come. And in Boston, everybody knows I've had a connection with Boston for years. I was once their announcer. Many friends on the team. I love the way this this new team, because a lot of people forget that Boston was in a rebuilding year. They lost seven starters on their travel team over the past two years, and they are able to to get through that and play at this level, and we are at the last jam of Boston versus D.C. And, and it's Little Pain. How more fitting could it possibly be than Little Pain to bring this one home for Boston. She calls it off, and that should do it, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, let's see, she's, yep, she puts up a smile. That girl shows no emotion, a little, little crick in the side of her mouth right there. Was all you got from Little Pain as Boston. Yeah. And an unofficial score goes, beats the DC game, 226. To 131. And you see the Boston Massacre taking their victory lap. What do they win for this victory? Well, not only do they win uh, an adulation to their fans, but they win a date with Philly tonight. Now, the Philly Roller Girls, for those of you who've been paying attention to the last couple of months, have really gotten the attention of the Derby world. But what we saw from Boston today, you got to wonder, you got to say, Boston wants to play Philly tonight. Boston 0-5 versus the Philadelphia Roller Girls in WFTDA history. 0-5. You know Boston's been saying to themselves for years, we can beat this team. Tonight might be the night. When you come off of a good win like this, a solid win. But like I said, they were playing calm all night. They didn't get excited. They stayed within their own heads. They still have a lot more energy. Those girls don't look tired at all, and they're ready for a second game tonight. They are ready for action. There's no doubt about it. We are ready for action here at WFTDA-TV as well. Hello, WFTDA.TV. I am Pelvis Costello. I am here with the visioneer of the Boston Massacre, Little Pain. Congratulations on your win, of course, right now. 226 to 131. And in that, you scored 90 points. 58 of which in the second period with only one penalty box minute. How are you feeling? I feel really happy. I'm really proud of my team. They've worked really hard. And um, we, put, we sacrifice a lot so that we can be the best roller derby players that we can. And I feel like we're really ready to show ourselves at regionals. Talking about sacrifice, we had actually talked right here on the same station last year after after your last win, which was that on Friday. And we were talking about that whole proving year for the Boston Massacre. Yeah. And as you had gone on, of course, you you taken on London, you taken on Montreal. Now this year coming back, you had a tremendous win against Cincinnati coming into this, and now you're going to be facing Philadelphia. Yeah. Philadelphia right now currently is zero and five in the legacy on this. But going into this, we're seeing a cleaner massacre as you're going in. So taking that, going into your game tonight, what do you think to be the primary focus for, for you and your, and your teammates? Um, the massacre tonight is really focusing on teamwork, really staying together. Um, they have some size advantages, and we're really gonna focus on making sure that we're together. Um, and we've been talking about um, David and Goliath. And it does feel that way because we're 0-5 against Philly. Um, this is a really big opportunity for this massacre team to play Philly. We haven't gotten to do that yet. And we love them. They're a sister league to us. Um, we feel really positively about their legacy and role in flat track. Um, so it's something that we're really looking forward to. Well, definitely we are seeing a, a great thing. You're taking on DC, a team which you had never faced before. Yeah. Uh, one thing that you guys have definitely been doing this year that has been obvious is that just some of the risk taking that you've been taking with the teams, just going up for that competitive edge, and it's been paying off. Yeah. We've been seeing these point spreads where you're still about 100 points above the competition, but at the same time, they're also bringing up those points. So going up against Philly, who has been known to really start to hit that bear, that just assault, kind of like what you guys are doing. Yeah. What are you thinking about as far as your pack strengths leading into this? Um, 
Well, there's times where we know we're strongest if we're all on the track. Sometimes it's worthwhile to have the other opposing jammers score some points so that we can free our players from the penalty box and really trying to be um, intentional about when we do that. Um, we really trust in our coach. So when we make a play on the track, it's very practiced. Well, that trust is paying off and definitely everybody at home got to see that. Check it out, WFTDA.TV. Little Payne, Pelvis Costello, enjoy your day. Thank you.